The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. To my brother, my brother, and me. It's an advice show for the modern. Whoa! It came out so. Fuck? It came out so weird. What the it's fuck? So weird. Let me try again. Yeah, no, was... I don't think you get to. I don't think we should try again. <sighs> I think we should uh, embrace. I said modern from the beginning. Yeah, I, it's weird to hear it any other way. But it, what's great is you didn't even say modern right. You said it in yeah. some sort of weird half measure between modern and modern. It's weird that I. Don't make it further into the show than this before I start getting a little bit of the old razzle dazzle from you too. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, it's an advice show for the modern era. Thank I'm your you. oldest Ooh. brother, Justin McElroy. I what's up, Trav Nation? I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy, and here comes the king down from his throne. Woof woof! It's me. What up, Trav Nation? It's your middleest brother, Big Dog Travis. Woof woof, McElroy. Woof woof. Travis makes me and Justin carry him around during the podcast in a big golden bathtub. Correct. And it's it's so heavy. Like I wish he let us use a lighter it, vehicle. It's a prescription golden bathtub, Griffin. It's a um, prescription one for his duff and his legs. Yeah. It keeps my duff sparkly. Hey, I've got a new segment that I want to try out. Justin, I need you to grab like a piece of paper and something to write with. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Fucking any 43 years before this moment, you could have told me I needed a pen. Well, I know, but you're in an office. Most. We're professional. Do I need any props, up. Trav? No, you don't, Griffin. I can get some if you want. Only, no, Sh- only your brain. Travis texted us at 7.30 in the morning about this new game, so yeah. it better be good. I've been developing it for about six days, though. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. That's how long I think Milton Bradley worked on Monopoly. So yeah, it's been in the R&D. We've been bouncing it around. I did some uh, focus groups. Yes, yes. Wow, the paper and pen room sure yeah. is further from the recording audio room in Justin's house. I know where gr- his... Recording setup is like adjacent to his office. Yeah. So, like, where's the pens and papers being kept, if not office? Because that's, I mean, they sell it at Office Max. A notes app on the phone probably would have sufficed. That would have worked too. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly. Sure. Hey, when he gets back, can you say like, actually, you don't need it. You don't need a pen. Okay. Paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As like a funny prank, and yeah, the I'll listeners can like be a part of it. Yeah, I'll tell him. Yeah. Boy, he sure has been. Oh cool. my god! I hope he's cool. okay. <laughs> What if she was rushing and he slipped on the stairs? What if he, oh, no, I can hear him coming. It's a big cough. Do you think he's winded from that? Hey, do, do the prank. Okay. Justin, you could just use your like notes app on your phone. You don't really need the pen okay. and paper. Yeah, if you I'm want ready. To... I've got it. I've Actually, got can it. you go put the pen and paper back? <laughs> no, no, don't you do. You should use it, actually. Okay, I'll pick it back up. We're pulling this puppet's strings today, baby. He does have his headphones on now. Okay. I threw it. Are you ready, Justin? I don't know. Great. You tell me. Do I have all my props? How well do you know him? Well, it's time to show him. You'll have so much fun on Ask Me a Brother One. Hello, and welcome to Ask Me a Brother One, <laughs> the oh, only man. podcast game show in which... I test to see how well two McRoy brothers know each other. This week, our guests are this feels like the Griffin game. Griffin, am I saying that correctly? Uh, it's, it's actually Griffin. Uh, everybody, Justin. Everybody's Griffin, been getting it wrong. Griffin, Griffin, and Justin McRoy. Now, how long have you two known each other? 
uh, 30, God, who knows? 30 some odd years. Who knows so, how old? Sorry, 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 sorry. This is important. Who knows how old I am? <laughs> I'm going to do a stone cold 37. No. 36. Yes. <laughs> all right. So it's it all sounds right. like you two know each other pretty well. Well, this is to a bad start. I'll, I'll yeah. go ahead yeah. that right now. Not great, but okay. Yeah. So uh, this is an asymmetrical game show. Um, I'm going to have Justin answer the questions. It's the secretly. newlyweds game. Just say newlyweds no, game. It's a little bit different it's than called that. Ask me a brother one. It's Enjoy called Ask song. Me a Brother One. Okay. Justin, mm. number write down or whatever you're using. The numbers one through four. Okay. And then you're going to write your answers next to them silently. Okay. Do not answer out loud. Okay. 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 First, and this okay. this week's category is historical figures. Oh, okay, which cool. for uh, our purposes means they have to have been deceased for at least thirty years. Okay. Prior to okay. Now, okay. Wow. So this is okay. not going to be so much information about Justin. Justin, and... number one, a historical figure that has had a huge impact on your life. Don't say it out loud. <sighs> Just write it down. Histor- d- dead for over thirty years. Yes. Okay. Um, it doesn't have th- have to be the one that's the most impact on your life, right? We but don't... do write that, or else how the f- what the fuck else am I basing my guess on? If it's not the most important historical figure on your whole life, juice, your whole on life, whole journey, your whole journey. I know the what the journey. answer is, and, so, and not fam, not family, right? not family. Correct. I know what the correct answer is. The question is, does Justin? Yes. Does okay. ju- is Justin going to get the question about himself right enough? Um. All right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Got Second it. question. Wait, I don't yeah. answer. We don't do the no, questions. No, no, no. Th- no. Second question. A historical figure that someone would be surprised to find out you think is hot. That I think is hot? Correct. Hmm. Historical figure dead more than 30 years, surprised. You're wanting me to think of like hot, dead, the, yes. famous people? Correct. Hot, what dead, is this? Famous. It doesn't even have to be famous though, right? It could just historical be Historical like- figure. A hot person who died three decades ago. What is that? 92? 94? 94. Pre-94. Okay. Okay. Number three. A historical figure that you think is overrated. Ooh. I think I got this Whoa. one. All right. Hold on. Wait. I'll get there. I don't know how to oh. answer this one. Juice, text me what you're going to write down for this one. No, no, no. Hold on. Take the answer. You're going to historical figure that I think is overrated. Correct. Okay. Um. Um. Oh. Okay. I got it. And finally, a historical figure that you think you could take in a fight. Oh boy. Okay. (sighs) Um. Yeah. 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 Let me know when you have them all written down. The prestige for okay. this. Okay. Now, game. Justin, I want just you checking to. Checking a spelling. Sorry, just checking a spelling real quick. Okay. Okay. Got it. Now, Justin, I want you to mix up the order in your head and read them out loud in a mixed up order. And, Griffin, okay. you are going to assign those names. Cool. Got it. To the correct category. Great. Got it. Okay. You can do this. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Justin, okay. read them out the in a mixed up order. order. In a in mixed, mixed up, up order. order. Chris Columbus, which I'm realizing I should have written Christopher because he was the explorer one. Not the That's director. Okay. One. We can be casual. Christopher Columbus, um, James Buchanan, Charles Dickens, James Tussaud. Okay. Who was the last one? James Tussaud. French. Uh, French okay. painter Got James okay. Tissot. Now, All Griffin, right. Yeah. Which is the historical figure that has had the biggest impact on Justin McRoy's life? Most important. Uh, I don't think it's any of the first three. I'm going to say James Tissot for that one. No. Incorrect. Fuck. Okay. Wait. I wrote Jesus Christ. Right right I thought Juice was going to say Jesus Christ on that one. Because if you tell me that there was another figure that had more impact on more of your life than our Lord Jesus Christ. No, I he had a fit. big impact, but that's like so obvious. Don't give the like, answer okay, yet, maybe. Justin. Don't give the answer yet. Griffin. Surprisingly sexy. Yes. Charles Dickens. Incorrect. Okay. Oh, Should, Griffin. But have, you seen, have you seen Charles Dickens? Because I literally haven't once in my life. I have no idea what this fool <laughs> oh, is. Oh, for two. Like. I imagine. Now, Griffin, 
Which historical figure is overrated? Uh, I take back what I said about uh, Charles Dickens. I just saw a photo of him. <laughs> His thesis is so wild. And I don't want to like shame him in any way because he's, a, I guess, an important historical figure. Um, but it's not the it's not as sexy as I thought we were going to be working with here. Okay, but I which one's overrated? Was. Overrated. Overrated? Christopher Columbus. There you go. Okay, that that's one. one. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. easy that's one. a nice, nice that's one. A nice that's a floater product. right over the plate. All right, okay. and finally, which one could Justin have taken a fight? Charles Dickens. No, maybe, but no. No, that's he was pretty stocky. I, I think Charles Dickens was a scrapper. Can I yeah. guess? I'm going to guess. Biggest impact, yes. Charles Dickens. Correct. Surprisingly hot, James Buchanan. Incorrect. Uh, was, that Jan- was that the Trousseau one? Yeah, James is so. And you think you could Frank take Banner, James is so. You could take James Buchanan a fight? Yeah, it looks just kind of reedy. I feel okay, like. let me look. Hold on. I'm going to have to look up James Buchanan now. Hold on. I got to show you guys this. I just ran across this self portrait of James to so recently. And I was like, dang, that's a hot dude, man. I'd love to look like that dude. I just shared the picture with you guys in the, in the Riverside. Let me see. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Hey, yeah, Damn. Them bedroom eyes. Oh, Boise. All right. Yeah, all right. I get that. So, Griffin, I don't think you know Justin at all. It sounds like you don't know me at all, Griff. Um, no, I mean, I got uh, my, I, that whole time was writing the correct answers for each of no, those Justin, things. No, Justin, Griffin, what Fortune. answers did you think Justin would say? I had Jesus okay. Christ, in order, Jesus Christ, Princess Diana, Elvis Presley, Gandhi. And then Justin okay. went with a bunch of, like, really obscure shit. And I went with, like, a okay. bunch of actually famous historical people. Why, Travis, from a game design perspective, why did I write those down, but Griffin didn't? Because it seems like we could just do Griffin now, Oh, right? it's an, like, it's I an, try to guess. do you want to, it's asymmetrical, Justin. No, but I mean, like, why wasn't he doing it, too, is what I'm saying. Like, that just why, seems, my I, answers, I should be clear, are totally different, right? Like, I wouldn't say that, you know, I find Princess Diana surprisingly sexy or that I could be you would, like Gandhi. Well, no, fight. that's not. Also, can I just say? That's not a surprise. That's not like, a surprise. Like, one of the most beautiful. Yeah, right. I, if you were yeah. like, I, I'm just going to say it, guys. I know you're going to argue with me. I think Princess Diana was attractive. People would be like, yeah, man. What are you fucking talking about? I yeah, mean, you were looking for the deep pulls there. I don't think. I mean, I don't think so. Okay. Huh. There it is. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> unsexy would be a better Yeah. Idea. I don't get more it. than more so than So you would say Griffin Diana. would say Princess Diana was overrated. Is what Every, I'm hearing. Both of my brothers just did the I'm I'm getting into this now push up on their chair arms to readjust yeah. their butt positioning to get ready to I really lay into somebody. Lady Di Duchess of Wales could have been all four of my answers. Is all that I'm saying. Yeah. Someone can be an important impact, have an important impact on your life, and you think that they are overrated. And Grim, just seems, what does that say about you? It seems to me you're playing this game, yeah, like a candle in the wind, and you never know who to cling to when the questions come in. That's that's, what I've, that's yeah. true. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm going to do some retooling on this game before the next time. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah, we'll it. put it back in the workshop. Yeah, it's going to be like. Uh, all categories to which Princess Die could be the answer. We'll see. We'll see components of this game after Travis melts it down for scrap in yeah. other future games. You'll see a part, Tra- and you'll be like, "Oh, ask me a brother one. I remember that." Sometimes I wish you had Burner Brothers. Sometimes where oh, you yeah. can like test out some of this stuff, I- and then when it gets to like. Now this is ready for the big show, my real brother. I have yeah. bad news for you guys. You are the Burner Brothers. And then oh, no. after I do this, I take it to Ask Hank and John. And then <laughs> okay. my real brothers. Um, yeah. We test it over there. Okay. Yeah. I bet they're really good. I bet they would get every answer. They know each other right. so well. Yeah, and their answers bet. are funny and uh, like intelligent at the same yeah. time. But they don't make you feel stupid. Yeah, That's yeah. So cool. Oh my That's god, so they're the cool. coolest. That's they huge. Smell, they both smell so good. Actually, but not like uh, you're trying. I'll decide what makes me feel stupid. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're right, Griffin. That's, I'm sorry. That's a surprisingly long list. Justin, hey, what's something advi- that makes Griffin feel stupid? <laughs> no, this is an advice show. This is an advice show. I'm taking the reins okay. from my brother. Um, and uh, we're we're gonna help you, the people, the 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 people of the world. That's who we do uh, this for. We're like the Princess Diana of podcasting. Mm-hmm. We're podcasters. Everyone we're the people's podcasters. Listen. Yeah. Everyone who doesn't listen is a failure for us because our mission is global. Our reach is limited. Our dreams are infinite. 
I've been invited to be the announcer for my younger brother's special needs Little League Baseball group this year. I have a background in performance, and it sounded like it would be an excellent experience for me in the long run, so of course I said yes. The problem is, beyond just announcing names and play-by-play commentary, I want to make the event memorable and fun for the kids and the families attending. What are some things I can do as the announcer to keep things fun and interesting? That's from Sincerely Baseball Babbler in Beaverton. Okay, I've done this job before. You have? Yes, for... The little league below little league, <laughs> the little very, league, the very little league. league. Yeah. yeah, the littlest league. I think pop, put some people call it Pop Warner. I, uh, I, you know, I was always at the the ball orchard as I called it. Yeah, <laughs> I was always in the field. Yeah, you couldn't get me picking them white <laughs> apples. Yeah, yeah. Get me out. So Justin would be commentating went, on the game, and then would be like, "Next up to bat, oh, it's me. Be right back." And then he would run down, <laughs> slam a dinger. Slam a dinger right into the concession stand. Just run fucking, back oh. up to the booth, call his own home run. Yeah, this amazing. Is, this is the same. This is the same time period at which I was playing catcher yeah, for my yeah. team, and one of the parents thought I wasn't coming back uh, fast enough after one of the innings, and she yelled, "Get the lead out, RoboCop!" at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good. Uh, it's a good. <laughs> Stand. I'm just saying, really like, good. as I know, I told that on the podcast before. As but. heckling goes, that's almost like, man, Robot Cop is cool, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I, did you just say Robot Cop? Robot he did. Cop. That's his he full name. Robot I don't Cop know him well enough to call him by his nickname. I call him by his full oh, name, shit. Roberto Cop. This is <laughs> Robert guys, Cop. <laughs> this is now the fucking inception of bits. Yeah, we go, we're going to need several kicks to get back. <laughs> To the question. That's fine. That's fine. Because I just want to talk about Robert Cop. He's <laughs> he's a cop. Please, Greg, Mr. Cop was my father. Greg Jarrison was a cop until he got blown up, and they had to recreate him in the lab. And now he's Robert. I think it's cop. better if he wasn't a cop at first. If it was like okay. he was a dog walker, but now he's a robot, and all the dogs are freaked out, and we're like. We did put a lot of cop shit into your robot body, so yeah. maybe you want to just follow that. I have to go to academy, <laughs> and then it's just oh, Police we combine Robocop. Yes, Robert Cop. Man, I was almost started talking about Robocop and Oreos, and I decided to to leave it to leave it where it was because I don't. Did, did I? Do you guys know about that? Hey, listen. As long as we're talking about Robocop, can you guys give me one minute of your time? Yeah, yeah sure. Can I have one minute of your time? I promise sure. it'll be worth it. Okay. Yeah. I have, I'm gonna need one moment of your time. I'm going to show you a brief uh, one minute long clip uh, and I'll just send this to Rachel later so she can edit the audio in because guys, it's good. There's an A was carrying. This is from, oh, sorry. This is a special effects uh, artist who was working on the film Robocop with Peter Weller. Okay. From the special features, the actual ass special features. There's an A was carrying, I don't know, about eight Oreos. (laughs) In a, you know, stack. I'd hand him his weapon. I'd say, Peter, safety's off. And he wouldn't take the pistol. And he says, Robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> and I looked at him and go, no, it's just you and I, Peter. Robo doesn't get an Oreo. It's Peter wants an Oreo. Peter can have an Oreo. And he clip clops in the suit over to the edge of the railing. And Peter starts bellowing. Robo wants an Oreo. And when the steel mill just echoes, Randy has Oreos or Robo wants an Oreo. And Steve Lim over the radio goes, um, Randy, do you have Oreos? <laughs> and say, stuff that whole stack in my mouth. And then crunch them and let them fall down three stories onto everybody below me. And I, Not anymore. And Robo got upset. I haven't got a damn clue about Randy Moore and his fucking Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> Robo does want an Oreo. So what What Randy Moore was positing there was that he was like, no, no, no. It's just you and I. I'm not giving you an Oreo if you call yourself Robo. Right. You have to say. <laughs> Don't get you, one. Peter can have an Oreo. You have Peter to say have Peter wants an Oreo. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And it's also, this guy absolutely went toe-to-toe with RoboCop. And this is exactly a RoboCop move. RoboCop would be the one to to shove the Oreos down his throat so the perp couldn't have them. He, like, he he, he stared him right down. 
He beat him. He beat Robocop. Peter, I would also challenge you what Robo would do with an Oreo. Like, yeah. chew it up and then get it in his servos and gears and pistons. No, probably no, not that. It, well, the other thing I do want to point out, at the end of the clip there, you heard Peter Weller denying the, the this entire story, which is an incredible uh, testament to the malleable uh, power of memory. Because if I'm Randy Moore... That's the wildest day I've ever experienced. Yeah. And your everyone life. on the crew was like, oh, yeah, the Oreo thing? Yeah, we were all there. This is a regular day for Peter Weller. Well, this of course like he doesn't remember. Out, of yeah. course, I wouldn't Justin, remember that. Yeah, of course that he doesn't time. remember. He wasn't Peter at the time. No, he, he was, was Robo. 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 Those are Robo Robo's remembers. memories. That he left those behind when right. he stopped being <laughs> Robocop. So, of course, Peter doesn't remember. No. When that other guy took over his RoboCop, he was immediately like, why am I so mad at Randy Moore? And why do I want Oreos so, so bad? But not like want one like I'm hungry, but hung like I want one like it's a vendetta. I want one like I, it's a burden. I have found that it's pretty foolproof these days. If you want to get a crowd hype, yeah, you drop Baby Shark on them. Okay. I feel like if you just start a Baby Shark round going, everybody's going to get into it. They all know the movements. Everybody's been around kids enough. It's a pretty good track. Yeah. yeah. I think just like bust baby shark out. That would be my, if you have a PA where you can like play it, that's ideal. But like you can, I'm trying to think of how you do it with just your mouth. <laughs> you, could, yeah. you could come up with some like a baseball theme, like hit the ball. Do, ball do, 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 do. Yeah. Like feel the catch and then run away. Do, do, run away do, still works. works. Yeah. Baseball safe at, safe at do, last. Do, do, do. Safe at last yeah. works. Safe at last. Do, do. That one's good too. Yeah, there's a you lot of baby also, shark stuff. You could also like make up a lot of lore about each player's like time in the big leagues before like, you know, yeah. time and age had wear and tear on their knees and stuff. And now they're yeah. back in the little leagues and yeah. talk about it. You know, like, oh yeah, they used to be, uh, they were bad in, you know, a four- Four two five back in the mangers, but then they slid in at home, ripped the cartilage straight it out is, of their knees. It is weird that it goes up, but not back down. Yeah. I never really thought about it before, but like the idea is you can't hang with the adults until you're an adult, right? Yeah. And then eventually you're an adult for so long that you're like, you now cannot hang with the adults. But I feel like if you take a 65-year-old, 70-year-old former pro ball player and put him in the little leagues, he's still going to be able to to like oh, yeah. hang, right? Oh, yeah. Like he could he could hang in there. He's humming yeah. dingers straight out of that baseball yeah. orchard. Is that what um, the rookie was about? Yeah. Uh the opposite, I think. Mm. Um okay. it's what little big no, sorry, big little league was about. The sequel to Base, Little Big League. Baseball is objectively the boringest sport, but they have solved one thing, it, which is of America. This. Of um, American You sports. know there's more boring sports out there, right? Yeah, okay. certainly like globally. Chess. Chess is considered a sport by You many. and I tried to learn cricket for a month. Do you remember this, Griffin, when we tried to learn cricket? Yeah, for but video? Uh, people seem to really enjoy cricket once you like understand what the three bats, what the three shells are. There are people who enjoy baseball as well, Griffin. Yeah, you know Amanda that, right? Gets, gets into it. Yeah, people like lots of boring stuff. Anyway, baseball is not boring. You guys are okay. idiots. All okay. Right. I'm sorry. Well, hey, anyway. I'm sorry. I yelled at you guys. The and bit. I'm so sorry. I don't All think right. I know you. Okay. Sorry, Slugger. Calm down. It's okay. I'm kind of a baseball man. That's incorrect. That's not true. I was in uh, a shitty minor league for seven years, and I was bad at it the whole time. But damn it, I stuck to it. Because McElroy's never quit. Yeah. The baseball's boring, but they have solved one thing, which is that walkout music is great. And they get to pick their own walkout music. It democratizes okay. a lot of this hype up process. And that is the only... Sometimes I think... What a, it would be great to play baseball, so I would get to pick my own walk up music because oh, I, I imagine that Ooh. is a really fun decision to make. You could, could do that in wrestling too, though. I mean, you could do it all yeah. the time. We have well, phones in our pockets, we have phones in our pockets that have speakers in them. Okay. Yeah, we could you could walk into any room with walkout music going, yeah. No, for sure, but like not. Yeah, but it's not played over the speakers. It's not like the the crowd has to be wanting it. Oh, I like, see. You know what I mean? The crowd has to want it and need it. Have yeah. we talked about um, what ours would be before? Mine would be "We Belong" by Pat Benatar. That would be some, cool for baseball some, or any like any particular any sport. literally any moment of any day to have that slow build come in. Yeah, and people would have yeah. to be pretty patient. Admittedly, okay. the the this the um. I feel like a lot of people like to get a crowd excited by asking them who came the farthest. 
seems to be something that people do to kind of get on the good side of the crowd. Ask him who came the farthest Not- or like who, okay. you know, like they used to do in church on Mother's Day. They say like who has the most kids and then they give them like a longer basket or, or something. something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think they ask people who travel the farthest much at local Little League games. Probably not. And certainly not, not. And certainly not in the walk up. blocks. Oh, I only came five blocks. Oh. Now, now, Justin has introduced an interesting idea here, which is if your walk up music was like 10 to 15 seconds of rec- pre-recorded crowd work. You yeah. walk up to the mound and you just hear Justin's voice saying like, hope everyone's having a great time tonight. Who's ready to see me really slam-o a dinger? Who here came the furthest tonight? And then it would cut off because yeah. it's like, clearly it's right out. Don't forget so the, the person goes hot before- dogs. Yeah. So the person goes before you, Darude Sandstorm. Before that is fucking uh, Baby Shark. And then you walk out to your own voice saying like, What's up, everyone? It's me, Justin McElroy. <laughs> Guess what? Eyes up. He, uh, that's the air raid siren, because I'm about to slam a dinger right into left or middle field. <laughs> oh, shit. And- I forgot my bat. Hold on. I got to go back real quick. Shit. Where's my bat? I can't find it. Doug, have if- you seen my bat anywhere? I'll use if yours. Mem- if memory serves, no one actually asked me to do it. Um, I just said, like, I will do it, and no one stopped me. So I went up there, and I realized pretty quick that I don't know anything about uh, to say about baseball yeah so the two times i did do it most of my time was spent hyping up the concession stand oh yeah mm. like i feel like that's something i could do that has a palpable impact on the team yeah it's yeah. a longer view yeah right? it's not gonna help them right now but some of those money will help the money trickles cleats down. yeah and pads so it would be don't forget to get like a delicious i saw that some of the hot dogs yeah <laughs> they're looking really good yeah. yeah there's fun dip down there yeah tracy just you know. tracy just took another batch of dogs out and they're right yeah. they're fucking they're, tracy how are the dogs and she'll give me a like, thumbs, thumbs up. up she says yeah. dogs are good she just opened so a wet box and ready the, i don't she just opened a box of those gumballs that have like the printed on stitching that i think they only sell at, at little league concession stands yeah for sure uh hey, can i ask you guys another question or i could yeah. provide some wisdom from the cloud if that's yeah, yeah. Whichever, uh, acceptable. Whichever. Um, Brian sent this in. Thank you so much. It is a WikiHow article that um, was not written, but reviewed by Tammy Clater, the Ooh. etiquette coach. Um, Ooh. And it's, it, it, it's, it's a good one. It, it's how to uh, contact Mark Cuban. Contacting Mark Cuban is relatively straightforward, as he has an active business email in many social media accounts. The notably successful investor can be reached for business inquiries or fan comments through either of these methods. Business pitches and investment-related matters should be sent to his email, and fan-based messages should be sent on social media. Fair warning, though. (laughs) He's an extremely busy person, so you might not get a response. But that shouldn't stop you from contacting him. You might get lucky. Yeah, that's true. You might get lucky. You might be able to get a hold of Mark Cuban. I'll say this. If you don't reach out to Mark Cuban, you definitely won't hear from Mark Cuban. <laughs> That's true. You miss 100% well, of the Mark Cubans that you don't email. How you could get Cuban reaching out to you, though. That's not impossible. Cuban might think, I got a project that's a good fit for the J-Man. I got to reach out to him. I yeah. want to point something out vis-a-vis R-E, Mark Cuban. I just looked it up because okay. I was like, how rich is Mark Cuban? Right? If you He's guys, a billionaire. If you guys had to guess, can you put a number on it? Yeah, How rich $4 he is? Yeah. How much? I would say f- $4 billion. $4 billion? That seems like a lot. I'm going to say- $3 billion. I'm going to say $450 million. Oh, no, he's definitely out. the only he's, shark who's a billionaire. Yeah, way so out. as of November 2000, uh, 2023, uh, Investopedia says $6.2 billion. Okay, I'm pretty good. But here's the thing. $4 billion is good. Yeah. He made five point six billion selling broadcast dot com to Yahoo before yep. the dot com bubble burst. Yep. Since then, it's not that it's not that impressive because I could have done that. Since <laughs> then, I mean? like you that, did it one time, that means he's only made another like point six billion. Oh, That's a I see really what you're good saying. point, Travis. Thank you. So one Thank time, you. he's you know he's struggling. You know, I'm just saying I don't know if he's the guy I'm going to for advice. Right. <laughs> He's on. He had that one thing. Hey, hey, Mark, why aren't you uh, hoarding wealth like a dragon? <laughs> why aren't you sitting on well, a big pile I of would, coins I and would. hoarding as much capital as possible? Only four bill, Mark. Yeah. Only six bill. 
Scrape those doubloons in, man. Keep, keep yourself a big... Come on, Smoog. <laughs> keep yourself a big pile of coins. Um, I think if Mark Cuban found out my points per game and my free throw percentage, I would get some inquiries to join the Dallas Mavericks. And then, mm. and then I wouldn't have to do any of the legwork. Make Mark Cuban That's come true. to you. That's the power move. That's the power move. Go on Shark Tank, walk out. Don't say fucking anything. Just stand there and mm. wait for Mark Cuban to talk first. That means you oh. you're in the power position. Um, I would anyway. contact Mark. Cu- I would contact Mark Cuban to be like, "How was your time on Entourage?" And then yes. also a follow up to another thing I just learned, which is according to Mark Cuban, Entourage helped him land Shark Tank. Wow. Okay. That, there's a story I bet there. That for six sure. billion didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, that probably was part of it. Because yeah. I don't think they auditioned to be on Shark Tank, right? They were like, "Yeah, you know what? We'll give you six point two billion dollars." That was a good Im- audition. Come on. Imagining Shark Tank. him walking into the 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 back room with a script, sort of nervously rolled up in his hand, uh, like, "Hi, I'm uh, Mark Cuban, hi, and hi, uh, today I'll be reading I'm the Cube Markin. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Today I'll be reading the role I'm of Cube Markin. Um, uh, I'm reading for the role of Bald Randy." The, uh, <laughs> the shark. The shark, bald Randy. Is when one you're a shark, you're shark. I is one of the main prepared 16 bars of a song. Um, <laughs> is one of the sharks in Shark Tank bald and named Randy? I feel like there is a Randy. <laughs> but I don't remember if he's Randy, the bald one. Randy, shark, do, 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 Randy, shark, do, 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 do. Are you thinking of Kevin O'Leary? Kevin O'Leary, I was thinking of him. <laughs> Yeah. To be Kevin fair, O'Leary. he's Kevin Randy O'Leary. So that's I will fair. say though, he's Canadian, and Kevin does convert to Randy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sure. That is, of course, there's a conversion there. It's the it's French the metric to imperial right. Right. conversion. Yeah, exactly. yeah. To, yeah. Uh, Randy uh, is <laughs> Randy is met- <laughs> metric Kevin. You should see him on Canadian Dragons. Did he comes out and he's like, "What's everybody? <laughs> it's Big Randy." <laughs> He comes out all cool on that show. He's got like big sunglasses. (laughs) Spread my doubloons. Ready to chuck some duckets and make some Cuban's not here overshadowing me. (laughs) Chuck some duckets and make some buckets is great. All right, email Mark Cuban. Use one of Mark Cuban's public email addresses. Apparently he has several of them. I personally feel very uncomfortable with the idea of reading one of these aloud. Let's not read. Let's not. No, let's make make one up. Cu- I'm going like to go with cubanmanwich at yahoo.com. I'm going to just Google email Mark Cuban to see how easy it is to actually find uh, Mark Cuban's email in, address. In my head, I was like, you know, it'd be fun. We should have like a, a, a race, a contest to see who can get a response from Mark Cuban first. But um, what? You know, you tell me the next 10 words of that bit. Get him, drop out get him to invest. Right get him to invest in my brother, my brother and me. I don't want any oh, of Oh, maybe he's, fucking a, money. he's the guy that's going to take, uh, ask me a brother one to TV. Yes. He's going to he's gonna angel invest and ask me a brother one. Yes, for sure. Uh, provided hey, to Mark Cuban, could you bring back CISO? Do you have that in your power? <laughs> hey, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Listen, it would not be that hard, I bet, Mark. Yeah. Anyway, uh, provide a direct subject line. Mark Cuban gets hundreds of emails a day. If you want to get his attention, use a direct but attention-grabbing subject line. One person who successfully contacted him wrote, want to disrupt the insurance industry? That feels apocryphal. I don't know I what. Fucking, I get fucking four emails like that a day, and I'm me. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no. Point. Yeah, no. sure. Yeah. Ready uh, to make $60,000 today? Like, yeah, I mean, that's a good subject line. I got to admit it. Um, make sure your subject line tells Cuban what your business proposition or question is about. Try things like question about tech investment or proposal for social media business venture. Okay. Cool, or, man. Or, or I've taken something from you. Hi, Mark Cuban. I've taken something oh. very valuable for you. And do you want it back? Hit me up. <laughs> do you want yeah. to disrupt the insurance industry and get back the important thing that I Mark <laughs> Mark? It's Mark. You it will be missed. Mark. Um <laughs> uh strike the correct tone. Keep in mind you're writing. I've emails. taken Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> I've taken Randy from you. <laughs> Wait, who's Randy? You guys if you know ever want to see, if you want to see Randy O. Kevin ever again in your life, <laughs> disrupt this fucking market with me. He's calling you Randy O. Kevin. He must be on the other side of the border. Legally, he has to call him Mark Randy. Cuban, Manhunter, Cube Markin. 
relentless. Uh, you're... <laughs> Cube Markin is my stage. Yeah. Yeah. In my new film, Cube Markin Relentless. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Liam Neeson team up, and yeah, I am funding the whole thing. Thank yes, you. thank yeah, you so asking. much. Now, how did they squish my still body? I auditioned for myself <laughs> with the knowledge I brought from Entourage. I have the acting chops to deliver. How did they? Cute market is way different from me. <laughs> you don't understand. It's a different. How did it's they get? Like... How did they get my body into the perfect geometric shape of a cube for this movie? Computer graphics imaging. <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't be overly familiar. It might seem like a good idea to write to him in a friendly way to get his attention, but it could backfire. Avoid saying things like, hey, Mark, or what's up? They actually like that on Shark Tank. Okay. They actually don't like all this I'm gonna stuff. I'm going to try to unsend real quick. All the stuffy buttholes that come on Shark Tank, and they're like, mm, greetings, uh, professors. Uh. <laughs> they love it when you walk in, they're like, what's up, idiots? I'm Griffin, and this is my business, toothpaste for... Dogs. That exists. I was surprised that they funded Stuffy Buttholes, but the pitch for it was really, really good. So, like, yeah. I get it. I it's get a, it. It's an <laughs> aftermarket. It's also a show that, is, that has let people pitch uh, s- prescription pants that you can fart in for free. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think Wait, the pants. Sorry, Justin. Sorry. The pants yeah, are free? Prescription pa- Listen, the tagline from me. Prescription pants that you can fart in for free. The farting doesn't cost you money or the pants don't cost you money, Justin. No, the fart, that's got charcoal. Can I pitch my business to you guys? Yes, please. Okay. Hello, sharks. Uh, what's Hi. up, dudes? Um, what's up? I've got a pitch for you that's really going to blow your ass apart. It's called first Stuffy. Sh- first, should stuff- we pay? Stuffy. We should pray. Let's pray. Dear God, please help me do a good job <laughs> on this pitch. I need this money so bad for Stuffy Buckles. Okay. I. I I am on this stuffy butthole mission because of you, the Lord, because of the dream that you gave me that one time. And so I am going to need your help on this one to impress these to impress Randy and Mark. The end. So you know how at Build a Bear Factory, there's a lot of stuff they don't let you do to the bears. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> You're at the mall. You've just walked out of the Build-A-Bear factory yeah. with your lightly customized toy and feeling a sense yeah. of disappointment and emptiness. But what's that right across the mall vestibule? It's stuffy buttholes. It's an aftermarket garage <laughs> for Build-A-Bear for Build-A-Bear factory. And we'll take it to okay. the fucking hoop, guys. In, we'll do anything you want to these to these bears. It is not an issue. No, now, it question sounds to me like you can you can add buttholes to your bear. Is that that's what I'm just one of the features that we offer? <laughs> one of the required features is an entry, an egress from the the animal itself. Uh, Griff, I've heard that you have partnered with Bose. I was wondering if you could walk me through yes. how the, the Bose partnership figures into. Well, uh, I'll the, tell you, I buttholes. dropped my wireless headphones into the urinal, and then they were acting weird. And I didn't uh-huh. want to buy a new pair. So I went sure. to Bose and I yeah. said, we're doing this new thing. It's an aftermarket for Build-A-Bear Factory to add. And even before I could finish the sentence, uh, S- Stephen Bose was like, buttholes? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> and so that's, yeah, that's that's big for us. That's huge for us. Um, and what level of investment are you looking for? A A hundred dollars. Oh, very reasonable. Okay, I'll give you seventy five dollars for one hundred and twenty five percent of the company. Mm, do I have? Do, I listen. I would love to team up with you. Chef. You sell me the company, and I'll <laughs> give you a hundred dollars. Um, oh, I don't know. I've put a lot of sweat equity into it. I did buy the business at the mall. Um. It it, uh, it was a CVS, a mall CVS, and now it's a an aftermarket for stuffies. Um, Justin, mm-hmm. do you have a so counter? You... Uh, yes, it is where I prepare all of my food. That's an excellent joke, chef. <laughs> 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 I'm the funny shark. Yes. Funny shark, do 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 do. Okay. Funny shark, do 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 do. I hear your offer, Travis, and I say, shove it up your ass. Whoa! Now, but now I've challenged you. 
So oh, sorry. I thought you were going to say that that was the like tagline for selfie buttholes. One time I was this legit at a build a bear factory and uh, Henry, they had Sonic the Hedgehog stuff and they had Pokemon stuff. And Henry wanted a Pikachu bear with the Sonic voice box chip inside it. And I was like, hell yeah, hell man, yeah. that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then uh, the manager came zipping out from the back room like, you can't do that. What? And they wouldn't let us do that. I guess it's against the licensing stuff that they've got going on. But come on. A Pikachu with a Sonic the Hedgehog voice would be extremely good. And I don't know why they, they would ever find it. They should let you do whatever you want to the dolls. That's exactly the kind of thing. That was my evil origin story for stuffy buttholes. You know bring what? us I'm a Pikachu. Sold? Bring us a Sonic. I'll switch their souls. I, Mark Cuban, am going to give you six point two billion dollars. I want zero percent of the company. Fuck I believe yeah. in that. I believe in this to my very core. Excellent. Um, Can I work at Stuffy Buttholes? Because I'm broke now. I do need a job. Can I work at your store? I'll have you guys talk to HR. I was in Entourage. Um, one time on Canadian Dragon's Den, which goes way harder than American Shark Tank. Kevin O'Leary, someone came in and presented a board game because that's a big part of Canadian Dragon's Den is board game presentations. They're wild form up there. Cool. And he said, this is such a terrible idea. I'm going to have you come to my house and I'll pour you a nice glass of wine and I want you to bring all these that you have and we're going to throw them into a fire. <laughs> and then two years later, they do like the follow-ups on the show and he's like, this dude went out of business and they have footage of Kevin O'Leary in a boat going to his private island and inviting this dude over, going down to his wine cellar, getting a delicious bottle of wine, going up, making a fire, and then <laughs> sitting next to the man, both yeah. of them enjoying a glass of wine while his board games burn in front of I him. I love that. And they're both, it's, it's astounding. That's who I want to contact. That's okay. a very different energy that I don't have in my life. Yeah, you're right. You know what? Leary, wait, was he an entourage? He what was, was actually on Euphoria. Kevin O'Leary. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's when he. It's debut. when he made his balls debut. <laughs> we need money, and we're not going to get it from these rich old men. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Let's get the money zone. I want to tell you about Rocket Money and Please. how it helped me out. So Rocket Money uh, is a service where they're going to help you keep track of like your spending. Um, and one of the big selling prompts of it is that it helps you keep up with like when you uh, do a subscription for something or sign up for something and you can go there and see what you're like paying for. It. And maybe it's something where you signed up for like, uh, you know, a free week and then it'll kick into the subscription and you completely forgot to cancel it where they're going to help you do it. But also... Rocket Money gave me a notification of like, hey, uh, there was a weird big purchase on your account. Mm. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I went and checked it out. It turns out someone had hacked my ding dang Amazon account and ordered 23 foam kickboards. Yeah. To, so that a child might practice swimming upon them, costing me about over a thousand dollars in kickboards. They're really nice fucking kickboards. They're though, pretty gang. good kickboards. They are sick. Yeah, but this is not a bit. This is not this a bit. Like the there was a bunch of other stuff totaling $7,000 worth of uh, stuff that I did not purchase that was purchased on my account. And thanks to Rocket Money, I caught it early and was able to dispute it and hopefully get it all taken care of. And so Rocket Money was just like a good friend helping me out there, keeping me safe. Um, and I, just trust me, it's something you probably want to have too, because not only does it help with the unwanted subscriptions and monitor your spending, they can also help lower your bills. It's all kinds of wonderful stuff. Highly recommend it. So cancel your unwanted subscriptions and avoid paying for knee boards, kickboards you did not buy. Go to rocketmoney.com slash my brother. That's rocketmoney.com slash my brother. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash my brother. Strangely, those kickboards came to me. I know, we're getting it all sorted. If you want some new clothes to go with your cool border lifestyle, Travis, you should get Stitch Fix because the seasons are changing and so should your garments, so should your wardrobe. You should change your clothes. Yeah, that's um, true. 
And there is a good way to do that. And it's not going to the store and just guessing. You're not, that's not a skill you possess. So don't pretend like it is. Stitch Fix can do it though. It's an easy way to get clothes that fit you without having to endlessly browse through options or break the bank. You just fill out a little survey of what your sizes are, what kind of style you got that you're working with, and they'll they'll send you clothes handpicked just for you. And you, you buy whatever you want to keep and you send back whatever you don't. And it's not even an issue. Uh, we, we've all been using this for a while and uh, it is it is a very reliable way to uh, update and refresh my wardrobe. Um, mm. I do have so, one note for Stitch Fix. Um, yeah. If you, oh, could, good. if you could add a customizable option that allows me to choose how deep the pockets go. Oh, yeah. I would appreciate that because most of the most of the time it's just standard pocket depth. Yeah. I would like something that gives me a little more options, perhaps for yeah. a, a katana. A Travis loves katana. Travis loves to shove both his arms down his pockets up to the shoulders, and then he does a sort of like big legged walk. He calls himself the horseshoe man, and he'll start yelling yep. like the horseshoe man's coming, and he can't do that with. Yeah, I say hands. it more. Th- I say it more threatening than that, Griffin. Yeah, yeah the yeah. horseshoe man's coming, he's coming, and he's so, coming for you. If you don't want the horseshoe man to come for you. Then you stitch fix. And why would you? Yeah. You shouldn't. Thank I don't even like fix. doing it. They I just don't choose to do it. They just get me and they'll get you too. And so will the horseshoe man. If you don't try today at stitchfix.com <laughs> slash my brother, uh, you're going to get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. The Eurovision Song Contest. Hundreds of millions of people watch it every year. It played a part in a democratic revolution in Portugal. It introduced the world to Riverdance, and it launched Celine Dion's career. But you might have never watched it. It's got so much history and so many storylines that it can feel overwhelming to get into. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like a real housewife season, but everyone's a better singer. Well, sometimes. But that's where we come in. I'm Dimitri Pompey. I'm Oscar Montoya. And I'm Jeremy Bent, and we're the hosts of Eurovangelists. If you're new to Eurovision, we'll tell you everything you need to know to start enjoying the world's most important important song competition. And if you're already a fan, we'll dive deep on its wildest moments, like when Ireland sent a turkey puppet to sing for them. You're Evangelist. New episodes every Thursday. On MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jordan Cruciola, host of Feeling Seen, where we start by asking our guests just one question. What movie character made you feel seen? I knew exactly what it was. Clementine. From Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Joy Wang slash Jobu Tupaki. That one question launches amazing conversations about their lives, the movies they love, and about the past, present, and future of entertainment. Roy in uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I worry about what this might say about me, but I've brought Tracy Flick in the film Election. So if you like movies, diverse perspectives, and great conversations, check us out. Oof, this is real. New episodes of Feeling Seen drop every week on MaximumFun.org. Yes. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. What? I want too much squash. No. He did it himself. <laughs> A little Pete squad. Townsend podcast, uh, vocal podcast, machine I don't there. have time. Oh. I have three stories to get to. I can't wait for you all to, like, hear me say munch and then say squat. I okay. do not have time. That's fine. I do not have time. I'm... I'm crouching down low in the window. I'm just realizing I'm starting to look like a little guy pie. I'm going to scoot up so I look like a big man like my brothers. All right, here we go. I got three great stories for you. The first one is Smoothie King has dropped its new Sleepy Girls smoothie. Sorry? Yep. It's inspired by a viral Sleepy Girl mocktail. Yeah. It's the internet's latest obsession. Um, I kind of assumed every cocktail was well, a sleepy, it's a sleepy cocktail. cocktail, yeah. For me, if I have any cocktails, I'm gonna. I think it's, it's uh, weird it's, for Smoothie King to use the word "dropped" in terms of smoothie, a thing that I would say is on my list of top 100 things I don't want to drop. That's yeah, so it would be a huge. Mess. It should be like Smoothie King carefully delivers with a secure lid. Yeah, the Sleepy Girls smoothie. How late is Smoothie King open? You know, you could be sleepy in the morning. Sure. Sleepy yeah. in yeah, the morning, sleepy in the help evening. You sleep? Does it put you to sleep? Right. I would hope oh, I not. It woke you up. It helps. No, it helps you catch some Z's. It doesn't wake you up. Oh fuck okay. that! Then it should it be puts you to bed. 
How late is Smoothie King open? That's all I'm saying. Well, more importantly, do they let you get this through the drive-thru? Because I don't want a nation of people getting I'm suddenly trying, very sleepy yeah. while trying while driving. I'm going to be able. I can't resist a sip of Ruski. You know what I mean? I'm going to have a few sips of the way. Home. Absolutely. Up before I go through the viaduct. Yeah. You know? I don't need that. Uh, real quick, BurgerFi launches Yes Chef Burger inspired by movie The Menu. Huh. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Is there a new movie called The Menu? That's not a weird no. horror movie? <laughs> yeah, this is inspired by the Ray Fiennes 2022 film, The Menu. Okay. Which I believe is, it's, it's a suspenseful thriller, right? I'm thinking of the right movie, right? Yeah, it's a suspenseful thriller. Yeah. From 2022. Okay. Yeah. There is Join a- us in a chorus of Yes Chef as BurgerFi, the maestro of Better Burgers, owned by BurgerFi International, introduces the Yes Chef Burger. Guests will savor the simplicity of this viral savory sensation inspired by a scene from the movie The Menu starting on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. Okay. Yep. How? It took him a couple years. Listen, there's a very- It took him a couple years. There's a very plot important hamburger in the movie The Menu, and it is one of the more gorgeous looking hamburgers I've ever seen in my entire life. But- it did come out two years ago. So I, I get seeing the movie and being like, guys, that's a good looking burger. Let's strike while the iron is hot. Do you think maybe they couldn't get the partnership with Ray Fines and the menu? And so now two years later, they're may, hope, hope, hoping Rafe doesn't notice. Doesn't notice. Uh, maybe. Maybe they wanted to do the bear and the bear was like, nah, we're doing fine. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't really do burgers on the yeah, bear. I guess like that'd a be the thing. thing. We're embracing one of the most beloved catchphrases of recent pop culture trends, particularly on TikTok, and aligning our approach with the demands of our guests says Carl Bachman, CEO of Being Fucking Cool. <laughs> no, wait, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> International is what it says here. Our team is starting the new year saying yes to flavor and yes to our guests. I have asked, I've asked my children recently uh, because uh, sometimes I'll ask them to do something and I, I, I don't want to have to be like, oh, yeah, every time. So I said, just say yes, chef. And they both really yeah, embrace that. Both my kids yeah. are really into it now. If I'm like, hey, can you just pick it? Uh, just make sure you pick that up when you're done. Yes, chef. And it's her, yeah. wonderful. I would be yeah. satisfied with herd chef. If my kids herd would chef. just drop me a herd, like I do know that they hear it, even if I know they're willfully ignoring me as something. Yeah. Today's foodies crave a compelling experience, whether that means something that's trending in pop culture or a fresh new take on their favorite dish. Jesus. To Cindy Syracuse, the chief marketing officer of BurgerFi. At BurgerFi, we're here to curate offerings that align seamlessly with the preferences and cravings of our guests. Good Lord. So, so, yeah. But all of those are, that's a lot of words to say we made a hamburger. I yeah. made a hamburger that we hoped people like. I'm I'm confused because so far the- And also we have TikTok. <laughs> yeah, they've <laughs> only, de- they've described the burger as simple. So it's yes. a burger um, with like simple stuff on it. Yeah. We hope but people it's very like viral. it. I feel like so ma- maybe I've just got him on the mind, but it does seem like RoboCop wrote this press release. Um, <laughs> citizens it, enjoy the wet meat. Um, I, I have <laughs> Sub- oh, this is the last one story. Subway adds new snacks category to the menu. Oh, okay. cool! <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't handle a full sandwich. I'm feeling a What's mic that peckish. Mean? You want some chips? We got them. <laughs> okay. Subway announced a big menu update with the debut, 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 of, debut of Sidekicks, a collection of three new foot-long snacks. <laughs> foot-long <laughs> snacks? Only... Wait a minute. A foot-long snack? A snack of <laughs> one foot? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I could eat a foot of and have it not Fruit. be a meal. A fruit. Check that clean feed, bud. Check, check that. Check, oh, check I see. I see. I see. All Subway right. Announced, okay. That's still a big fucking cookie, my That's man. That's the biggest cookie I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. Snacking to new links. Subway's culinary team joined forces with Cinnabon and Auntie Anne's to create a because cra- they were close at the mall to create yeah. a crave worthy <laughs> new twist on their classic snacks. Subway also spent a year, perf- a year perfecting the recipe for its foot long cookie. To complete this irresistible new addition to Subway's menu that's big on size, taste, and value. Yeah. It is a cookie. Do you think that it's just the proportions they couldn't nail down? Like their They're first like, attempt they came out with. They, could, they have a every, five and a half foot cookie. Every time they baked cookie. it, it shrank. Yeah. Like, it's still not a foot. Damn it. 
if my friend tells me that he's going to go have lunch and I say, what's the dessert? And he says, a foot of cookie. I'm going to call someone. <laughs> cookie foot. I'm going to call cookie someone foot. and tell him about it. I don't know who the authorities, a family member. I don't know. I'm going to have new- one third of a yard of a cookie. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I'll they. Have a third yarder. <laughs> A choco chip third yarder, please. Uh, give me one three hundredth of a football field worth of cookie, please. <laughs> Are you okay, allowed so- to, when they ask you what type of bread you want your sandwich on, say, I would like two <laughs> foot long cookie paddles. That's cookie coming, boards. right? Like, that's their next, the yeah, evolution of They're going to put ice cream between these and make it into a stunt. I mean, absolutely. There's yeah. a Cinnabon foot long churro, because when I want... An authentic churro experience. I go to Cinnabon. It's baked to perfection. Served warm and topped with Cinnabon's world famous uh, Macara cinnamon and sugar. Now There's just- an Auntie Anne's foot long pretzel for $3, which reimagines Auntie Anne's buttery and salty classic. It reimagines it as long <laughs> and yeah. not pretzel shaped at all. It looks like there's some sort of white cream inside of one of these pretzels. I believe that's um, just where it's been torn. Yeah, I think it's just torn that way. And then and there's punished. the footlong cookie is back nationwide and better than ever after popping up in select restaurants on National Cookie Day in 2022 and 2023. It's thick, it's gooey, and it's packed with chocolate chips. I just think like me. If, I think if you say something is a foot long, you do not need to go the extra mile and say it is also thick. That is irrelevant to me. That is well, maybe even. It's deep. It's wide. It's, it's long. Deep, it's wide. it's yes. got all the dimensions. I'm saying if you told me they sold foot long pretzel rods and foot long churros, and then you told me they also sell foot long cookies, I will assume that the cookie has been fashioned into a similar rod style shape. These these three snacks are not yeah. equal in size because the churro Correct. and pretzel are stick based. And the cookie is very wide, like a snowboard. I think it's important to actually note the the, mm-hmm. the dimensions of this. It's video. two dollars and three dollars for those, and five dollars for the cookie. Yeah, that okay. makes sense so to me. That's it's a good. good deal. Yeah, guys, I'm going to read you a sentence that is not the wildest on Munch Squad, but it is top ten in inscrutability. Okay. The introduction of sidekicks builds on six decades of equity and expertise in all things footlong says oh, Douglas God. Fry, president of Subway North America. So what he has just said there <laughs> is this business of ours has done so much stuff with a foot. What are you saying? Our business have- has a real foot fetish, and what we is- have really prioritized that. I think We've gotten good at measuring are- things out to 12 inches. I think what he's saying is they already have the bags. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. what he's saying is we have the, the proportion of our restaurant is built to hold foot long <laughs> things. Exactly. You know how when you go back in history and you look at like the gait of a horse and you follow that through history and how it yeah. eventually dictates the rails of the shuttle? It's like that, right? Yeah. Everything here is foot long shape. We already we got the spatulas, guys. Yeah, so. we got the big bags. We've got this. We're when I worked at the it. when I worked at the country's best yogurt adjacent to the subway in Huntington, I did have to learn by touch and sight and maybe even smell how to measure out exactly seven ounces, nine ounces, and 11 ounces of soft serve uh, uh, frozen yogurt into cups. Uh, And to this day, I feel like if you ask me to get you seven ounces of something, I can do it pretty, pretty close to it. I think maybe there's a lot of spatial training that happens Mm. when you are a sandwich engineer so that mm-hmm. you just kind of have a good feel for when something is a foot long, which is a very useful skill, I think, that's going to serve you in life a lot. That would be a killer. That should be their new angle. Like, Arby's, we got the meat, Subway, everything's a foot long. Yeah, <laughs> everything is one foot. We got the best straws in the biz, guys. They're a foot long. You can't even believe it. Um, okay. Subway's multi-year transform. This is not a quote. Subway's multi-year transformation journey began in 2021 with an overhaul of its pantry of ingredients and continued to crescendo with significant changes to its entire guest experience, whether dining in or ordering online. This so is... do you think they realize that what they've just said there is, we peaked? Yes. That's it, man. It's um, all downhill from here. It's This is Tchaikovsky's third subway movement. The, cres- yeah. the, 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 cres- the build-up to the crescendo is... 
is breathtaking. We've edged our way to a really <laughs> great cookie <laughs> orgasm, you guys. You're going to fucking love this one. We're about to blow over here at Subway. <laughs> While previous menu and experience updates have been focused on Subway's signature sandwiches, Sidekicks puts a deserved spotlight on the yes. rest of Subway's menu. Cookies. Uh, and just wanted to let you know that Dave Makita, who is, of course, president of international and retail channels at Focus Brands, says these fan favorite snacks will delight in new craveable ways. Oh, big, big words there, Dave. Making a call it's new, shot. It's de- delight is craveable. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, they the same company owns all these places except Subway. Which I think is wild. Yeah. Like the same com- focus owns Auntie Anne's, Cinnabon, Carvel, Orange Julius, Juice, probably Schlossky's. Yeah, maybe Moe's. I don't know, but they don't own Subway. So Subway's like, listen, we know how to make things afoot. Yeah, you all know how to make things that aren't sandwiches. Yeah, <laughs> let's figure something out. Your food we smells. We lose our ruler over here. So thank you. I will say this: Subway. Famously, not a very good smelling restaurant. I feel like there's a definitive no, subway smel- smell every time. You- and they have lots of open meat. So, like, I get it. Auntie Anne's and Cinnabon, famously incredibly good smelling restaurants. So, I think just from a, se- a sensory level, this partnership is extremely good for Subway. It would yeah. be wonderful. If anything, if I could walk into a combination gas station subway and not want to yak all over the place, if instead it's like it kind of a little bit smells like cookies now, I'd be super excited about that. Hey, uh, I have two uh, important updates. One, we've been recording for over an hour. And two, I want a foot long cookie more than yeah, I man. want my next breath. Hold on, wait, yeah, wait. Man, I, I would get fucking off this recording. Of those three sidekicks, cookie is what's uh-huh. calling a foot long yeah. cookie is calling your name? Okay, wow. Yeah, man. I had churros last night at El Ranchito. That's okay. See, I, I haven't had a churro in a, in a minute, so that's sort of the direction. Yeah, I'm leaning. I, I, I went. I got. Um, some so this weekend, I am going to be at Sketchfest doing a, a live actual play RPG called Trap Venture Zone, February the fourth at seven p.m. Uh, featuring Eugene Cordero, Danny Fernandez, Aaron Keefe, Griffin Newman, Connor Ratliff, and Erica Ishii. Um, Did they agree to do it before they knew it was called the Traventure Zone? I didn't pick that. There was a list of names I submitted. Okay. And that was what the organizers of Sketchfest chose. You were about to say you didn't pick it. Did you write it on the list? Yeah. Okay. If you yeah. did want a portman, there's a different portmanteau where it's the trad venture zone, in which it sounds like you are a yeah. traditional, <laughs> a traditional trad wife. Yeah, I'm trad, trad, wife. trad wife venture zone. Every morning I get up and lay out my husband's dice for him. <laughs> I sharpen all of his pencils, and I it's make sure too he's- It's late to be this funny, because you have to stop. Damn it, people already turned it off. You have to down. Shit. Damn it. <laughs> uh, go get your tickets. It's this Sunday. Don't miss it. Um, it's going to be a real hoot. Um, <laughs> where do they get those tickets, Trav, did you say? You can go to sketchfest.com. Uh, I okay. think it's sfsketchfest.com uh, okay. and find them there. We got some new merch over at the merch store, MacquarieMerch.com, including a, a Three Brother Moon shirt. It looks like the three wolves howling at the moon, but it's our faces. Uh, God, it's good. It's I, very, guys, very can good. I be honest? Can I wear this shirt? No. Yeah, man. Okay. Travis, the answer is for me and Travis. You understand we're going to be diametrically opposed, sort of. I have, the start. I mean, I I have several the start. t-shirts with my own face on it, so yeah. don't you worry. I have one, and it's uh, little. It's my face is very small on the shirt, uh, so I feel like I can I can pull it off. Sometimes when I wear a coat, my face isn't even showing. Ten percent of all merch proceeds this month will go to World Central Kitchen, which uses the power of food to nourish communities and strengthen economies through times of crisis and beyond. Uh, and uh, when the new month rolls over, we'll have some new stuff for you that we'll tell you about then. So uh, come, come and visit us. It's pretty great. So yeah, starting the first, go check it out. It's Thank really, you really to great. Montaigne also for the use of our theme song. My life is better with you. Uh, it is a it's a just a really good like tune. It's my favorite track from our podcast. Uh, it's the only song really on our podcast, but it's of all the songs that are like on our podcast is like my favorite one. Should we? Um, so yeah, to wrap it up here, um, some people sent in wishes that they wish for uh, Fungalore to hear. First, okay. I do want to address one um, because someone said that they made a f- uh, the Fungalore fan from St. Louis said they made a silent wish for $900. And when they got home, 
they uh, found out that the insurance company was giving them a refund of $740, and now they're a true believer in Fungor. Fungor does not grant wishes. No, and he didn't intercede in there at all. If yeah. he had, he, he would have gotten- the wish. Yeah. If he had, you would have gotten $900. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Not seven hundred. So this is not a place where you were asking Fungor to grant a wish. Okay. But let's not get it twisted. So uh, this one- Let's just do one. This. I think we just do one. Yeah, this one. At the end. Let's create an environment where we can lift this up. Yes, okay, thank you, ready? you. Thank you. Maybe uh, you guys hum. Okay. Maybe, uh, yeah. Okay. You guys hum and I'll read it. I wish they'd make milk duds better. Like, how do you keep fucking up chocolate and caramel? Milk dud duds. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been My Brother, My Brother, Me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.